Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of my favorite 400 sports cards. We are counting down currently at number 281. This is Red, your host. A little excited because Major League Baseball is opening. Unfortunately, the Twins budding star Royce Lewis already got hurt today. Um, high school baseball is hopefully getting underway for games next week. Although we did get some snow up here, so that's going to have to melt. But I think there's a chance that will happen. Um, here we go with a 1895 card. This is a mail cut plug. Hugh Duffy. Rated by SGC. Now these cards came in cloth bags or tins of plug, plug tobacco. Uh, they're pretty rare cards. They are actually 40 times less popular by PSA reports than the TOT. T206s. Uh, there were 40 cards in this set. Eight of them ended up getting updated, so 48 different types of cards. But uh, the fact that they were updated with newer teams kind of makes you think they might have actually been made in 1894 first and then updated in 90, 1895. They're Black Beauty cards like the uh, 71s, making them very difficult. I mean, they'd be difficult to find in good condition no matter just because of their age but uh, that kind of makes it even more so the backs of these cards were also black they were really thick now this one's not black because it was probably in an album and then taken out of that album and doing so made this card really thin actually put a little hole in this card which appropriately is why it's graded authentic but uh, pretty cool card of one of the best players of the 19th century. Hugh Duffy started with Cap Anson's Chicago White Stockings in 1888. Um, and when he showed up in Cap's office, this 5'750 uh, pounder uh, looked like a bat boy. But Cap quickly uh, liked the guy, turned some heads. His best year was in 1894, so really the year of this card. And it might have been the best year anyone ever had in the 20th or the 19th century. That season, he won the Triple Crown, 440 batting average, uh, which is still a record. 18 home runs, which is quite a feat for the 19th century. 145 RBIs. He had 237 hits, 51 doubles, 16 triples, 48 stolen bases. Uh, so quite a season for also a really good center fielder. He retired like a lot of players in the day did as a player manager, uh, ending with over or almost 2,300 hits, 106 home runs, 1,300 RBIs, a 326 average, 574 stolen bases, and 43 wars. So one of the best players to come out of the 19th century, Hugh Duffy. Next, we've got another tobacco card, but uh, unlike those early 1900 tobacco cards, uh, this one came out in the 50s, 1952. So there are quite a few years that they just came in gum and candy, but uh, Red Man turned uh, to making cards for a few years there in the 50s. Uh, this one in 52 uh, came with uh, first the card, then there was a layer of cellophane, <laughs> cellophane, cellophane and then uh, chewing tobacco. Now this George Kell itself had that tab. There used to be a tab on the bottom of the, a lot of the cards that you'll see. Uh, this one was cut off and it was probably even cut a little too small, a little trimmed, and that's why this one, like the other one, gets a grade of authentic. But it's okay, it's still a nice presenting card. Now, Kell was a Hall of Famer, but um, yeah, not necessarily one of those fantastic playing Hall of Famers. He uh, was a decent third baseman, nice player, and he did get over 2,000 hits in his career, 306 career average, 13 All-Star seasons, um, and did have a couple really good years there, 49, 1950 were his peak years. He uh, led the league in hitting at 343 and 49, and then the next year in doubles of 56 and hits and hit 340 in uh, 1950. Career ended up with a 37.6 war. So 
52 red man George Kell. Next on our list, we've got another Hall of Famer. And this is a guy who, after two years on multiplayer rookie cards, 62 and 63, he got his first solo card in 1964. Uh, Gaylord Perry finished with 314 wins, 3,500 strikeouts, 90 career war, two Cy Youngs. Uh, but his cards still seem to fly a little under the radar for all those kind of accomplishments. He won 20 games five times, over 300 innings six times, uh, which maybe the the hardest feat that he did, including a couple years there, 72 and 73. In both years, he went over 340 innings. And that 72 season, so I'll show his 72 card because that was his first non-giant year. He went to the Cleveland Indians. That season, he went 24 and 16 Started 40 games, so you got decisions in every game. 342 innings, so that's over eight and a half innings a start. Completed 29 of his 40 games. A 1.92 ERA, 238 strikeouts, and 10.8 war in one season. So quite a year for Gaylord Perry. Uh, as long as he's out there, I got to show. This was one that I pulled in that vending box and did send in for grading. I got some really nice Gaylord Perrys out of that vending box, which were my original videos uh, showing cracking that thing open. Uh, that was a really pretty card, I thought. All right, next, we have got a 33 Gaudi of Herb Pennick. So Herb was a, a good left-handed pitcher, um, played on a few really good teams, started with the uh, early 19 teens Connie Mac A's then ended up with the uh, Red Sox in those early Babe Ruth days and then the bulk of his career 23 to 33 so this is towards the end of his career on this card were with the New York Yankees 1924 was Herb's best season that year he went 21 and 9 with a 2.43 or 2.83 ERA and ended up fourth in MVP voting in his career he won 241 games. And uh, of note, his daughter Jane married Eddie Collins' son, Eddie Jr. And they actually had a couple of sons, but uh, neither one of them ended up playing in the MLB. So Herb Pennick. All right, next is our tribute to offensive linemen. Unfortunately, this is going to be my only offensive lineman that makes this uh, top 400 list. And because of that, I'm going to go ahead and show a little slew here of some all-time great old-time offensive linemen. Before we get to the card that actually made my top 400. And that is, I just like that card. I like the facial feature there. He definitely looks ready for a football game. That is Jim Parker of the Baltimore Colts. Now, uh, of those cards, I, I picked Parker uh, because after being a run blocker for Ohio State, he probably became the best pass blocker of all time. And in doing so, he uh, actually helped get a few other guys into the Hall of Fame, including that quarterback, that receiver, and this running back. So Jim Parker, the back of that 1964 tops card of Parker. Okay, next we come in with a manager. Uh, he did have an okay playing career before he became a manager. But Leo the Lip de Rocher, shown here on his 1951 Bowman. Um, de Rocher was quite a colorful manager. Um, he took over the Dodgers in 1939, and he ended up winning over 2,000 career games. Uh, he did... Uh, have some notoriety as well as he ended up missing the 1947 season of the Dodgers, the year 
Uh, Jackie Robinson came up and was actually featured in that movie 42 for his association with gamblers, which got him disqualified, suspended for the season. Ended up the next year taking over for the Giants. Uh, and that was a World Series season. Um, piloted them, or uh, that wasn't a World Series season, but yeah, piloted them to a World Series in 51 and 54. Uh, was featured on a, a Munsters show. Uh, he was out of baseball for quite a few years, then came back with the Cubs in 66, and then lasted there till 72, and then ended up with the Astros for the last year and a half of his career. So Leo, the lip, shown with some stains on the back. I'm guessing that card was on something, a wall or some kind of glue but that's fine with me. And last card featured today is Kurt Flood. This is his second card, a 1959 Tops. And I don't have the 58. And this is one I wanted again show packs. Uh, this is a 1959 Tops pack. And like Kurt Flood, I don't have a 1958 pack. So that's kind of why I went with the Flood pack combo, but these 58 packs, I thought that's actually one of my favorite looking unopened packs. The pack itself's got a little tear up there above. You can see some of the cards inside. Someday, who knows, I may get into that pack and see who's inside. But Flood was a seven time gold lover. Uh, for the Cardinals, he actually started with the Reds, and then because they had Veda Pinson in center field, the, he was expendable and got traded to the Cardinals. Played there for 12 years, got over 1,800 hits, 293 average, 42 war, and then that famously, at the end of the 69 season, kind of had a little falling out and got traded to the Phillies for the 1970 season, but he never reported. He uh, said... Uh, after spending 12 years in St. Louis, why should I pick up my family and everything and just go where management wants me to go? Um, so he ended up fighting, which uh, at the time was the reserve clause, something that was only applicable in baseball, bound him to the team that he was, um, or that he signed with initially. Uh, he really, his only recourse was to hold out, but uh, he couldn't do anything to force uh, himself to go to another team or if he got traded to another team couldn't stop it um so he challenged that actually ended up other than 35 games with the senators in uh 71 i believe he uh in their 70 or 71 he ended up not playing another game and he was still good at you know at the end of that 69 season but he kept challenging things he got a lot of support in fact these were some of the players drysdale Koufax. Jackie Robinson, Lou Brock, Hank Greenberg, Mike Shannon, that all uh, tried supporting him in his fight. They went all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, he ended up losing, so he uh, didn't have any choice of where he got to play. But it really propelled uh, Marvin Miller and the Players Association to get going and further fight that reserve clause so that finally... In 1975, they did declare, you know, made some rules around it, but that there could be free agency, and these two became the uh, first two big free agents after that season. So, Kurt Flood, he's given a lot of credit for, you know, helping the Players Association get a lot of the benefits that they have today. And they also, they call, they've got that 10-5 rule now, where if you play uh, five years with the same team in 10 years, total in the league that you can't be traded without consent and they call that rule the Kurt Flood rule. So that is it for today. Put that card there. We got a little mix of lots of cards out there. We got that 59 pack out there. But those were the featured cards of the day. Thank you for watching and enjoy baseball again. We will see you again next week.